The referee's job is responsible and never easy. They're often the target of name-calling due to early or late stoppages, but the decisions they make are always aimed at protecting the lives of fighters. But from time to time, they get into a situation where they have to turn into the third fighter, in the cage, and put things in order. So let's see what that looks like. Now Conor McGregor. Referee Mark Goddard found himself in the history of Conor's wild confrontation. His assignment that night was to referee the match between Charlie Ward and John Redman at Bellator 187 in 2017. After Charlie knocked out his opponent seconds before the end of the round, Conor couldn't delay the excitement. He jumped over the fence and ran straight into the arms of his victorious teammate. Mark, the man in charge of order in the arena, asked McGregor to leave until the winner was announced. But Conor, unsurprisingly, decided to make a scene. He continued to run towards the referee, whom he verbally abused and eventually pushed him. Security intervened, but Conor kept his finger pointed at Goddard, shouting and shifting all the spotlight from Ward to himself. Fortunately, he was escorted out of the cage after security entered, and who would have thought that such a small man would need a bunch of people to intervene? However, the incident went unpunished, and the Notorious found enough humility and dignity to issue an apologetic statement. Gilbert Avell is a veteran of the MMA sport with over 50 matches and has been through various organizations, big and small. However, the notorious Gilbert is well known as one of the dirtiest MMA fighters ever and has been disqualified quite a few times for illegal strikes. Accordingly, in 2004 at Fight Festival 12, Avell entered the fight against eight backmen. That match ended with a knockout after 30 seconds because, thanks to Gilbert, the referee was the one who ended up unconscious. According to Avell's words, that referee was simultaneously the promoter and coach of his opponent, which means that his interest was Beckman's victory. After the referee's irregular demands, Gilbert, known as an aggressive fighter, could not find his patience. The referee continued to yell in his face to return to the same position, after which Gilbert knocked him out. But what he said about this event was even crazier. <laughs> Only in the last year is a decade after the incident, Avell presented his side of the story, which he says he did not act correctly but does not regret. And the hatred towards that judge and the whole situation haunts him to this day. The following incident is much milder if we compare it to the previous two, but unfortunately, this one did not go unpunished. In 2016, the UFC brought its event to Brazil, and their card featured two titans, Roy Nelson and Antonio Bigfoot Silva. Don't think they are bitter enemies because these two giants found a common language in 2015, when Bigfoot was helping Nelson for his match with Overeem. A year later, their friendship was tested in the battle, and Big Country proved to be a true friend, even though in the end, he was the one who got into trouble for his actions. As for the match, Roy was convincingly winning, and after a little more than a round and a half, he threw Silva to the floor with an uppercut from the counter. Nelson followed with additional punches. Antonio was already unconscious, but the referee was late with his reaction. Big Country was visibly frustrated by the late stoppage, and then approached referee John McCarthy and kicked him from the back. Everybody knows Dana White's stance on unnecessary interactions between fighters and referees. Accordingly, the Brazilian Superior Justice Court of MMA fined Nelson with 24 grand and a nine-month suspension. The consequences could have been much worse if Roy had not presented his reasoning to the court. At Japan's Grachon 5th event in Tokyo, homegrown fighter Takeo Shina presented himself as an unpleasant fighter in his debut. Unpleasant in every scene of the word, that is. His opponent and victim of unnecessary violence was the Korean Jun Hyung Lee, who also came as a debutante. At the first contact, Takeo sent his opponent to the ground with punches, who immediately lost consciousness, which did not prevent the Japanese from ceasing fire. The referee did an excellent job of quick intervention, but he also got beaten, more precisely, knee to the face. It was at that moment Sheena lost his mind and all sense of control. He removed the referee and continued to punch his opponent. It took several officials to restrain the Japanese, who, 
after a minor cooldown, continued to act as if nothing had happened. The brawl lasted longer than the bout, and despite the knockout, Young Lee was declared the winner, and Takeo was disqualified. What an ingenious way to present yourself in front of the home audience. A brilliant debut by a Japanese fighter who fortunately never returned to the MMA scene after this shameful event. In 2011 at the URCC Baguio 3rd event, there was a fight between Razi Jabari and Hono Rio Bonario. However, things did not end there because the referee got involved later on. Jabari was more than motivated to make amends following a string of defeats at the URCC after receiving a severe warning from the Games and Amusement Board that they would not be renewing his professional MMA license if he lost that evening. Jabari was prepared for battle even before the big day because of this. Numerous witnesses to the weigh-ins the previous day expressed dissatisfaction with Jabari's inappropriate behavior. He approached quite aggressive and agitated towards the other fighters and the hosts. After some time in the match, Hono Rio found himself in full mount where he was beating Razi. The referee intervened and separated the fighters and everything went as it should until referee Joey Lepitan told Jabari to shake hands with his opponent regardless of defeat. Jabari's answer was to push the referee and sucker punch him, after which Joey scored a takedown on him. Several people had to step in to settle the fight, and Jabari was banned from the UCC. But with his 3-6 record and last 5 losses, there was no need for him to return to the competition ever again anyway. At the next Fighter 8th event in 2023, there was a very short fight between two young Romanian TikTokers, Dustinul and Sadiq. After showing their amateur skill in the first seconds, Dustinul goes for the takedown, and his opponent reacts quickly and packs a deep guillotine, forcing him to surrender. Dustinul tapped, the referee separated them, and then a confused situation occurred. Sadiq seemingly ran towards the cage fence to celebrate the victory, and it seemed as if Dustinul thought he was being attacked again ran towards his opponent without thinking. Luckily, referee Emoto grabs Dustinul by the neck at the right time and slams him to the ground in the blink of an eye. Things continued normally, and the young man became aware of his mistake after the brutal slam. After this, you can see what happens when you hold an MMA event and let the influencers fight. It's always the ones with the tattooed face who make the scene. One championship always has something to excite us. The organization is crowded with respectable fighters and rarely someone makes a scene. The following situation is more funny than problematic. This Mongolian slugger, whose name I cannot pronounce, and Chinese star Ma Jia Wen needed just one minute to settle things between them. Zolt hit Ma with a sharp right hand that disrupted the fuses in his head. The referee's intervention was quick and worthy of respect but the Chinese fighter did not want to go home without a win. He tried to get up and grab the first leg he saw in front of him. Unfortunately, it was the leg of the referee, who justifiably started panicking and tapping. You know how dangerous leg locks are, especially if the man holding your leg received a confusing blow to his head. Fortunately, everything passed without incident and hard feelings. And who knows, maybe Wen thought that if he broke the referee's leg, he wouldn't be able to declare the winner. Ilkam Nazimov came to UAE Warriors 39 in Abu Dhabi with his 7-fight winning streak, where he tried to compete with power puncher Rustem Kudai Bergana. Both fighters already boasted quite a few stoppage victories in their careers, but neither one likely expected the fight to end as quickly as it did. Only 3 seconds had passed, and Rustem reacts with his heavy right hand to Nazimov's kick and knocks him out of his shoes. The referee's intervention was not even necessary because Kudai Berganov just walked past his unconscious opponent. Referee Daniel Movahedi approached to check the condition of Ilkham, who started a fight with him due to the blow being too heavy. The funny thing is that Nazimov was in the fight with the referee longer than with his opponent. For 30 seconds after the fight, he was trying to overpower him, and it was obvious that he lost his sanity from the impact. We have reached the end and we believe you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell because we are releasing the next video soon. If you like our work, punch that like button and feel free to insert ideas for future videos in the comments. The Clash of MMA will be happy to provide you with the content you want to see. Remember to keep your guard up and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.